This will be the sixth John Leslie Hood 1969 amplifier I review. This one I bought from AliExpress. It was not a kit. It came assembled this way. The board is marked Class A, 10 watts. JHL. Actually should be JLH, not JHL. The man's name was John Leslie Hyphen Hood. Of course, this amplifier came out in 1969. I don't know what 1804 is, and there is a little number over here. I think this number probably identifies the board. The first thing I did was to make a uh, schematic and a board layout with various notes and whatever. As always, you should always check to make sure you have the most recent version of my drawings. And these are, of course, located in the subdirectory below. As I said, I purchased this board, this amplifier, from AliExpress. The AliExpress seller offers this picture of the unpopulated board. It says it's an 1804. It has no identifying board number here. And take note of this. It's a capacitor here two resistors below it and one above it. On eBay they are selling this populated board. Two resistors below this capacitor, one resistor above it. The board I got has two resistors below the capacitor and two resistors above the capacitor. This trace, which appears on my populated board, is this trace here. My board has a little dog leg to accommodate this other resistor. No dog leg, no resistor. and no identifying number on the board. Mine has an identifying number. Now this is a fairly important resistor. And if you compare this amplifier with this amplifier, all the rest of these components are identical. It's not like they moved this resistor elsewhere on the board. Schematic wise, this is the resistor I'm talking about. And it is this resistor. It needs to be there. It provides drive to this lower half of the totem pole. So that's interesting. The other unique thing about this board is that these mounting holes, all four of them, are surrounded by a, uh, a plated area, top and bottom. These plated areas are not connected electrically to the board. So any mounting screws that are connected to a metal uh, enclosure, for example, are not connected in any way, any way to the board. Unless <laughs> a little thing called J1 see it there, J1 if I jumper those two unpopulated holes this mounting hole only connects to the common 
which is really most of the bottom of this board. Not directly, but through a 10 ohm resistor. I'll show you on the schematic. Here we've got a common, and that common is also uh, the negative input for the audio in, uh, the negative input for the audio out, and the DC common for all any circuitry. Power supply is connected between VCC and common. If there's desired to be a connection to the metal chassis, if this is mounted on a metal chassis, you close J1 and you're connected through our ground, which is a 10 ohm resistor. I've installed a heat sink, uh, power supply. Now, this is the first one I powered for my uh, switching power supply just more convenient for me. An 8 ohm load input from the function generator. And I went to adjust full load current. And notice that these potentiometers, both the uh, current and the crossover point, are sealed. Uh, does that mean they've individually tested these boards and sealed them. That is, they've got some clear plastic glue or whatever, so I can't turn these pots without breaking the uh, seal. But I don't need to, it turns out. I powered up at 26 volts. I have one amp, 1.04 amps. I measure the crossover voltage. they provided a place to measure it here and it's 12.9 volts 26 volts on the input for all practical purposes 13 volts on the up on the crossover point and one amp of current right now I've got um, 50 Hertz square wave going in and this looks pretty much like uh, what the test done in 1969 looked like. Somebody said I couldn't get 10 watts out of this but I'm inputting a little less than a volt RMS up here and I'm outputting 11 and a half volts here. Remember that 8 volts applied to an 8 ohm load is 8 watts. And so the power varies as a square of the voltage. So you do the math. 11 squared divided by 8. This well exceeds 10 watts. We'll go to 50 kilohertz. And this was the real test. And look at that. Those square waves are almost perfect. Now there's a little bit of noise here, but that's the power supply. We'll go to uh, 1,000. There is a square wave in and out at 1,000. Hertz. 996 Hertz. It's perfect. 10 kilohertz. Perfect. There's 20 kilohertz. Now, when I increase the output from the signal generator, we'll notice that we're not going to get any increase in the output. So I'm already at the max. If I turn it down to say 10 volts output, things begin to even get better. 200 hertz, look at that. Get back to 50 hertz. 
It's every bit as good as the test in 1969 did. 500 hertz. And I can actually hold my hand on this heat sink. There's 26.2 volts indicated on the power supply. 1.23 amps. 10.2 volts RMS delivered 8 ohms. So this thing is easily making 10 watts. It's not that hot. I'm physically able to hold my hand on this heat sink. So I think of all the, well, of the six amplifiers I've tested, this one probably is the best. I found some minor errors on my schematic. Well, not the schematic, on the board layout. I'll update this and uh, publish a new number six uh, plan sheet in the directory below. So after six tries, this one really looks good. Well, thanks for coming back.